throughout pretty much the whole um, sub-Saharan, well not even sub-Saharan, they're um, yeah they are found pretty much throughout the whole continent. Um, they're mainly a wetland species, uh, living in and around water um, and bodies of water and things like that. Um, they are kind of a, an average size for an ibis, um, weighing up to around about one and a half kilo. Um, uh, and the diet for these guys mainly consists of um, invertebrates uh, and small insects and things like that. Uh, they will also take small vertebrate prey as well, they'll take a range of fish, frogs, lizards, anything like that really. Um, so yeah, they are pretty much mainly um, pretty much carnivorous. Um, there is a little bit of um, seed eating in there but not too much uh, so so yeah they are pretty much um, pretty much carnivorous um, so yeah like I say these guys are found throughout the majority of Africa um, they are also found in the Middle East a little bit um, there's a couple of populations uh, in the Middle East um, and then there are actually uh, feral populations of these guys throughout um, throughout the world actually there's quite a few feral populations in Europe um, a couple over in America um, yeah which which does cause some issues um, hi Lorraine hope you're okay this week good to see you watching um, yeah so like I say there's a number of feral populations around Europe and around the world um, they don't really seem to have too much of an impact on local ecosystems and things like that, but um, but yeah, they're, they're, they are springing up in places they shouldn't be. Um, a lot of that is from uh, the way that zoos used to do things, actually. So a lot of zoos, especially in Europe, used to have free-flying flocks of these guys. So um, they'd basically have a group of sacred ibis in the zoo. They'd let them out during the day. The ibis would go and fly off and. Uh, go wherever they liked really and then they'd come back at night to to sleep basically they'd, they'd come and roost back at night um, and obviously that ended up lead, leading to feral populations when certain individuals didn't come back and things like that um, and there have been quite a few issues really within within France and um, things like that um, so um, yes yeah, so so there, there is a um, there is a real issue with that from um, from uh, the feral populations of these guys in Europe, uh, and these guys are actually now on the um, European Invasive Species List, uh, which is a bit of a um, puts us in not us in a bit of a bind, but the zoo community in a bit of a bind. Uh, this invasive species list um, basically means that we're not allowed to breed these guys, move these guys, transfer these guys. <laughs> release them into the wild, anything like that. Um, we're not really able to do much with, with them at all. Um, so the, 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 the kind of long-term plan for, for these guys is in, in captivity, well in Europe, in captivity in general, is, um, is uh, to, to phase them out. So yeah, we are in a bit of a sticky situation with that, um, just as a zoo community in whole. There's a number of species on this invasive species list, which, which we're, we as a zoo community are not able to do anything with anymore. Things like raccoons are on that list now. They'll be being phased out of, of captivity in Europe. Um, Quartimundi, um, there's a lot more on the list as well, but I can't think of it off the top of my head. But yeah, there's a good large number of species on this list. Um, so, and, and these guys are, are one of them. Hi Tim, hope you're okay this week. Yes, yeah, so these guys are classed as least concern on the IUCN red list. Like I say, they, they are found throughout most of Africa. Um, there's a good number of them out in the wild. Um, and that's another reason they're kind of on this invasive species list. There isn't really any need for uh, conservation of this species. They're not conservation dependent. Um, so another reason that these guys are going to be phased out of captivity. So we have three sacred ibis here um, at the park. We've got the two that we can see here, and then the third one is just over to the right here behind the branch there. Um, up there somewhere. I can't quite see it, but he's up there. Um, but all three of ours are elderly individuals now. 
Um, they're around about 20 years old. Um, captive ice pump, these guys are somewhere between 20 and 25 really. So, so yeah, um, we do have an older group now. And yeah, like I say, once these guys do eventually pass away, um, they'll um, help get for sacred ibis here at the here at the park. Which is a shame because they are, in their way, they are quite nice, nice to look at. They are nice little birds. Hi, Matt. Hope you're okay. Hope you're all all right. So sacred ibis, um, get the name sacred ibis because they are, um, well they used to be um, quite well, uh, what would the word be, um, worshipped almost by um, by the ancient Egyptians, um, the god Thoth, I think, I don't know how you say it, but that's how I'm going to say it, um, was, um, yeah, there, there's a lot of links between sacred ibis and that god. Um, and a lot of um, ibis were were killed and mummified um, alongside pharaohs and and other kind of noble men and things like that in ancient Egypt. Um, so yeah, there's a really strong link um, between sacred ibis uh, and and ancient Egyptian culture and things like that. Um, which yeah, like I say, it's obviously where the name sacred ibis uh, does come from. Ironically, there's now no uh, sacred ibis in Egypt. Um, they have actually, um, it's one of the areas they're not doing brilliantly and yeah they have been extirpated from from Egypt at the moment which is um, yeah fairly ironic um, but yeah so so yeah really important birds um, for, for our ancient uh, Egyptian culture and things like that Yeah, quite distinctive. Um, as with all ibis, they've got um, this long curved beak. Um, helps them to probe in the soil and things like that for the invertebrates that they want to feed on. Um, yeah, it makes, it makes life a lot easier for them. They do actually have a couple of very close relatives, the Australian white ibis and the black-headed ibis. All three species of ibis look incredibly similar. Um, it has been debated whether they are same species or different species or things like that they the current thinking is they are three distinct species especially because they've got kind of different ranges and things like that but um but yeah um yeah got a couple of very close relatives that, that they can breed with um if, if not managed correctly but yeah like i say we've, we've got an old group now um living out their days here, but um, uh, Right guys, I think we will wrap it up in a moment. So um, if you've got any last minute questions, feel free to send them in. Um, now I know I was off last week, but unfortunately I'm off again next week. So, so there won't be another video next week, um, I'm afraid. Um, but we should be back and we should be back to kind of normal service in two weeks. Um, so, so yeah, we, we should be back to <laughs> weekly videos um, in a couple of weeks. But yeah, no no video again next week. Um, and then yeah, back to normal. Yes, yeah, so these guys, Tim, are at least concerned in the wild. Um, there's an awful lot of them out and about uh, in Africa uh, and things like that. So, um, so yeah, um, they um. Yeah, they're doing okay out in the wild, really. Uh, there are quite a few of them left out in the wild. They're quite adaptable birds as well, I think. They're, they're able to, to make the best of the, of the situation. So, um, so yeah, they're doing okay at the moment. Yeah, nice to see them having a bit of a sunbathe at the moment. I've had to come down this end because they do get a bit nervous if they get too close. So I'm going to stand up this end rather than be right next door to them. Um, they're not as confident as the... The northern wall by this. Um, yeah, they do get a little bit more nervous and a bit more flighty. Right, guys, we will call it a day there. Um, so, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Uh, sorry, that it's only for one week and then we'll be, <laughs> we're off again next week, but um, yeah, hopefully, normal service will be resumed in a couple of weeks. Um, so, yeah. Until then, take care. See you later, guys.